In this video, we're going to look at Copa Airlines. And Copa is an airline located in Panama. And what I do in my videos is I run a discounted cash flow model to figure out the intrinsic value of the stock. And we compare it to the actual stock price to see if it's a buy or a sell. We also look at the financial ratios of the company and compare them to its competitors. So let's get started with the model. First, we need the market cap, which is 2.16 billion. And that's the value of the company according to the stock market. And we also need the stock price. And that's currently trading at 51.37. Next, we're gonna pull their free cash flows. And that's cash flow from operations minus capital expenditures. And this is how you value a company or value any asset. You estimate the future free cash flows and then discount those numbers back to today's value. And that's what I'm doing in a video here right now. Next, I'm pulling the net income and this is the profit and loss on the income statement. And then I'm gonna pull the revenue, which is the sales. And that's also on the income statement. And the numbers all look pretty good. So you could see in these numbers in blue, this is the 2020 and 2021 projected revenue. And this is what I pulled from Yahoo Finance. And that was the projections by the analysts. I didn't use the calculated revenue because that was way too high. And in the midst of coronavirus, I don't think their revenue would be like it was the past couple of years. So I think these estimates are more conservative and more realistic. Let's figure out that capital structure. So let's get their interest expense. That's the interest they pay on their debt. That's 51 million. And then let's see how much debt they have. We'll go to the balance sheet. We'll go to the liability section. And the current liability shows their current debt of 117 million. That's debt due within 12 months. And their long-term liabilities shows their long-term debt of 938 million. That's debt due after 12 months. And they pay 4.9% interest on their debt. Let's get their effective tax rate because interest payments are tax deductible. So their income before tax is 293 million and their income tax is 46 million. So now that we have their cost of debt, let's get their cost of equity. We need the beta for that. That's the volatility of the stock. And the higher the beta, the, the more volatile the stock is and the higher the WAC, the weighted average cost of capital. And the beta is 1.5. So that means the stock moves roughly one and a half times of what the market moves. Let's get some more information from the balance sheet. Let's get their current assets. These consist of cash, accounts receivables, and inventory. And that's on the balance sheet. And that's 1.2 billion. And let's get their current liabilities. And these are current debts and payables, which are due within 12 months, and that's 997 million. And let's look at their equity, that's 1.9 billion, that's total assets minus total liabilities. We also need their EBIT, that's earnings before interest and taxes or operating income. And that's how much money the company makes on its operational business, but before paying its interest expense and taxes, that's 435 million. Now we know their weighted average cost of capital, that's a blend of the cost of debt, 4.1%, and they have 35% debt in that capital structure, and the cost of equity, 13.8%, and they have 65% of equity in a capital structure. So the weighted average cost of capital comes out to 10.4%, and that's what we're gonna to use to discount the future cash flows. So we estimated four years of future free cash flows and then we did a terminal value, which is all years past year four. Then we discounted those numbers back to today's dollars. And we get a value for the whole company of $3.9 billion. We divide that by 42 million shares. And we get an intrinsic stock price of $92. They're trading at $51. So they're trading at a 44% discount. So it's a buy according to the model. Let's see what Simply Wall Street values the company at. They value them much lower at $68. They're probably using more 
aggressive numbers in their model. When I say aggressive, I mean lower revenue or less growth in the future. I try to be somewhat conservative by using the estimated revenue because if I didn't use that and I used an extrapolation of their prior revenue, the number would have been much higher. Now, let's look at the historical stock price. So you can see the stock drop during coronavirus. It was, and it was trading well over 100 two years ago up to like 130 it looks. So the stock has dropped quite a bit. So let's look at their financial ratios to get more information on the company. They have a great PE at 8.7 because their stock dropped so much. It was probably 16, 17 before coronavirus. So now it's a great value, 8.7. I like to see it under 15 and 15.1 is the median PE for the entire market. They also have a great price of sales at 0.8. That's price of stock over sales per share. They have a great price to book at 1.1. That's price of stock over book value per share. Good current ratio. They can cover their current liabilities, 1.2. ROE is decent, 13%. That's income over equity. They have a great interest coverage ratio. They can cover their interest expense eight and a half times. And they're good on debt, only 35%. So the best way to look at ratios is to compare them to companies' competitors. So I have Copa right here, Delta, JetBlue, Love, which is Southwest, Spirit, and United. And that's six companies I've done in this channel. And this is the winner for the categories. And then this is the average. So if any number's in red, that means Copa is worse than the average airline. And any number in green, that means they're better than the average airline. So Copa is a little worse in PE, although all the airlines seem to have a good PE. They're also worse in price of sales at 0.8. They're a little better in price to book. They're much better in current ratio. The average airline has below one current ratio, which means they can't cover their current liabilities. Copa is 1.2, so they can easily cover their current liabilities. They're worse in ROE, only 13% compared to the average of 20%. Debt, they're a little worse at 35%. The average is 34%, but 35% is a good number. And they're a lot smaller than average. Average is 9 billion. In market cap, they're 2 billion. So let me know what you think in the comments if you have more information on this company. Thanks for watching the video.